This video is about ionic bonding. Now an ionic bond is the transfer of electrons. Okay, so it is the giving and the receiving of electrons. Now you'll remember from last video that group one element loses an electron, whereas a group seven element gains an electron. So if a group one element loses an electron, they become a positive ion. And if you don't know what we mean by an ion, and you don't know how to draw these, then please watch the previous video on drawing ions. And if a group seven element gains an electron, it will become a negative ion. Okay, so here we have a positive ion and a negative ion. These oppositely charged ions are now strongly attracted to each other. Okay, they are attracted to each other by something called an electrostatic force. Okay, and that is because they are oppositely charged. A positive and a negative attract, so they bond. Okay, so the positive ion and a negative ion bond together because they are now oppositely charged. They are attracted to each other by an electrostatic force. This bond here is called an ionic bond. Okay, and it is called so because there has been a loss of an electron and there has been a gain of an electron. There has been a transfer of electrons, causing a positive and a negative ion to be attracted to each other. Now we can draw dot and cross diagrams to show ionic bonding. Okay, and I'm going to teach you and talk you through a couple of examples of how to do that now. So the first question here, draw the dot and cross diagram to show how potassium reacts with fluorine to form potassium fluoride. Okay, now one bit of advice, especially when you're starting off doing dot and cross diagrams, is to draw the electronic configurations for both of the atoms that you've got first. This is what I would suggest when you're starting off. Okay, so if we were to draw the electronic configuration for potassium, okay, so we find potassium on the periodic table, it's got 19 electrons, so we do, oh no, we do two in the first shell, sorry. And if you don't know how to draw electronic configurations, then please, please watch my previous video on electronic configurations to show you how to do this. Then we'd have eight on the next shell and that would make 10. We'd have a further eight. And then we'd have one more shell with one on. Now we can check we're right, of course, because potassium is in group one. Therefore, it should have one electron in the outer shell. Now we can draw the electronic configuration for fluorine. We find fluorine on the periodic table. It's got nine electrons. Okay. Now, what I would suggest you do here is we've noticed we've drawn the first electron with dots. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the second atom or the second element with crosses. Okay, now that is important when we're showing the transfer of electrons so we can see which electrons have come from where. Okay, now it doesn't matter which way you do the dots, which way you do the crosses, as long as you do one as dots and one as crosses. So, fluorine, nine electrons, it's going to have two in the outer shell. See, notice there I've done cross. And then it's going to have seven left. So the next one is going to have seven. Okay, so we've got our two electronic configurations for potassium and for fluorine. Okay, now what's going to happen here when they react is that this electron in the outer shell of potassium, remember potassium wants to lose this and fluorine wants to gain one to get a full outer shell, the potassium is going to give this electron to our fluorine. Okay, it's going to give the electron to fluorine. So now what we need to do is to draw our ions okay we need to draw our ions to show what would happen in this particular reaction now we drew ions in the previous video so if you don't know what i'm doing here then please go back and watch that video of me drawing ions okay but if potassium has lost one electron we now only have to draw the outer shell here okay so there's now eight electrons in the, that outer shell there because it's lost it's losing this electron here so it doesn't have this outer shell anymore so we draw the eight electrons here and again draw them as dots okay now it has lost one electron 
and therefore it's going to be a plus one charge or a plus charge. And now we're going to do your fluorine, it's going to gain that electron. So if we draw the outer shell of fluorine, it's got seven electrons in its outer shell. Notice I'm drawing these as a cross to show that they're different. And then that one electron that's come from potassium is also going to be represented as a dot because it's come from potassium. We draw that there to show that it's, that's a different electron to what it had. It's now become a minus. And that's how we show an ionic bond between the two. Remember from the previous part that these are now attracted to each other because they're oppositely charged. And that is an ionic bond. Okay, these are now ionically bonded, and that's how we represent them with a dot and cross diagram. So let's do another one. So draw the dot and cross diagram to show how magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Well, we look on the periodic table, magnesium has 12 electrons. So let's draw that out now. First shell, two. Then we're going to go to the next shell, which has eight and then we're going to go to the final shell, which has two. We can check we're right, magnesium is in group two, so it should have two electrons in the outer shell. Then we find oxygen. Well, oxygen has eight electrons, so we draw that out now. Now remember, this time we'll do represent them as a cross. So two, it should have six left. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and that is oxygen. Now, when these ionically bond, magnesium is going to give these two electrons in the outer shell to oxygen. So what we're going to do is we're going to first draw magnesium as an ion. So we're just going to draw its outer shell. So it's lost these two. So therefore, the next outer shell is going to have eight, seven and eight. Because it's lost two electrons, it's now got a two plus charge. And oxygen is going to gain those two electrons. So we draw the original outer shell of oxygen, which had six electrons in. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to draw the two electrons that we've received from magnesium, one and two. And then because it's gained two electrons, it would be a two minus charge. And that they would now ionically bond because they're attracted to each other from the electrostatic force because they're oppositely charged. Now, it's not just as simple as one atom of something bonding with one atom of something else to make something. So, for example, think water, H2O. That needs two hydrogens for one oxygen. OK, and it's the same here with magnesium chloride. So I'm going to show you how we represent this now. So the same steps apply. First of all, we're going to draw the electronic configurations for magnesium, then chlorine. So magnesium has 12 electrons. Therefore, we're going to do two and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 10 electrons. And then two in the outer shell. Magnesium is in group two, therefore we know it should have two in the outer shell. And chlorine has 17 electrons, so we're going to draw chlorine. But remember this time we're going to represent it as a dot. So two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now here we've got an issue because magnesium has two electrons to give and it needs to lose those two electrons, otherwise it won't want to react. But chlorine only needs one. So that means we need another chlorine to take the second electron that's available. So let me just draw another chlorine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So now that magnesium can give one of its electrons to this chlorine and it can give the other electron to this chlorine here. Okay, so that would be the cross there and we then put a cross there. That means we need two chlorines to react with one magnesium. So the way we'd write this as a formula is Mg for magnesium Cl2 because we need two chlorines to react with one magnesium. So how do we then represent these as our ionic bonds? Well, we can draw the ions for these. And if remember, if you don't know how to do this, then please watch the formation of ions previous video. 
So in magnesium, we draw the next outer shell. So that has eight electrons. It's now full. It has lost two electrons. Okay, it lost two negative charges. Therefore, it's a two plus. And then we can draw the magnesium, which has seven of its own electrons. And then each one has one from the magnesium. So that's gained one electron. So that would be one minus. But because of two, we need to draw another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One electron from the magnesium. So one minus. And again, remember that these two will now bond. They'll be attracted to each other because of an electrostatic force. Okay, causing them to attract. And therefore they will ionically bond. So what we'd now like you to do is have a go at answering these questions here and really trying to test your understanding. So pause the video now. Okay, let's go for the answer. So number one, what is ionic bonding? Well, ionic bonding is about the transfer of electrons. Okay, which means obviously one atom is gaining an electron and another atom is losing an electron or two or three. Okay, so the transfer of electrons is ionic bonding. Now, question two, draw diagrams to show how electrons are transferred when. Okay, so what I've done is I've done these for you. So with lithium fluoride, you should have drawn this. Okay, so two electrons on the outer shell for lithium, and it's a plus charge. And now eight electrons on the outer shell for fluorine, but remember one of those coming from lithium to become a negative charge. And then B, we've got potassium oxide. So what you should have drawn is there should be two potassiums to react with the one oxygen. Okay, and that's because potassium only has one electron to give, but oxygen needs two. So the two potassiums both have full outer shells. They both have eight electrons and then a plus charge because they've lost one electron. And the oxygen has gained both of those electrons. So it's got six of its own electrons, then two electrons in dots to represent one coming from each potassium and it's now for a two minus charge aluminium chloride we need three chlorine per one aluminium so we draw aluminium has lost three electrons and therefore it now has a full outer shell but it's a plus three charge or a three plus charge and then we draw the three chlorines each receiving one electron each so they have their seven electrons and they're one each that they gained from the aluminium and they've each become a negative charge. And finally, we've got sodium oxide, which we need two sodium, okay? Because sodium only has one electron to lose, but oxygen needs two. So we draw a full outer shell for sodium, which is eight electrons and it's lost one, so it's a plus charge. The oxygen has gained both of those electrons from each of the sodiums. So we draw it with its six normal electrons and the two that's come from the sodium and it's a two minus charge. So you've now there learned about ionic bonding, what ionic bonding is, and then how to represent that with a dot and cross diagram. You can now test yourself using the quiz and answer any exam questions on the topic. If there's anything you need help with or anything you didn't understand, then please get into contact with one of our tutors who will be happy to help. Why are we the best revision website out there? Well, because we have it all in one place. Revision notes, summary videos, longer, more detailed videos for topics you're struggling on. Exam question walkthrough videos, where qualified teachers take you through the perfect answers to exam questions. Worksheets, quizzes, computer marked exam questions, interactive flashcards, forums, the ability to keep track on where you are using our tick list and so much more but that's not all we run at least three live lessons a week and closer to exam time this will be more where you can tune into a qualified teacher teaching lots of different topics each week the lessons will be interactive and we go through exam questions and quick quizzes to ensure understanding as you go we also run drop in sessions where you can drop in ask a tutor anything live, get the answer that you need and leave. These are included in our silver and gold membership. This means that for an extra £10 a month, you can access at least 12 hours of lessons a month. That's under £1 an hour, which is incredibly cheap. Still not convinced? Try us completely free for seven days and cancel any time. Completely free of charge. 
we offer this because we're convinced that you'll love us. So try us now.